Dear Heavenly Father, God, we come to you tonight. We do thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to be in your house tonight. Uh, we thank you, Father, for each person who is here. Uh, thank you, God, for silly games that we could play, like finding the star and trying to pick up uh, cotton balls with cups in our hands and making a complete mess. Um, but, uh, God, I thank you just that you designed us to have fun and to enjoy life. Uh, thank you so much for that. I thank you, God, that we can now get into your word. We can talk about what it has to say to us and how they can um, how they can enrich our relationship with you. So, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would fill this room. I pray that you would fill me. I pray, Father God, that you would just have your way tonight as we uh, talk about your words. We talk about the gifts that were given to Jesus um, and what that really means and what that means to us today. Um, so, open the lines of communication. Uh, may it be useful. May it be beneficial. For those who listen, that's what your word really is is for each one of us. So bless this time now. God, use it according to your will, your plan, your purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. You haven't been here. You kind of missed this little intro video. This is what we've been talking about the last couple weeks. Did you make this? up to the front. All right. So we talked the first couple of weeks in here, talk, or this past two weeks plus that, we're talking about the gifts of Christmas. The gifts. We often, we read the story. We probably read it every year since we were a little kid. We know that the wise men brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We know that we brought those. Okay. Well, we think today we're like, okay, gold, frankincense, and myrrh for a baby. That makes no sense at all. Does it? It really doesn't. And, I mean, even if you're giving it to the parents, okay. I mean, obviously, gold would be very useful, especially to a poor family. Okay. I mean, that <laughs> that would go a long way for them. But what in the world is a, a carpenter, a stay-at-home new mom, going to do with frankincense and myrrh, except sell it to make money to be able to actually buy food to get along with? Okay. But there was meaning behind those gifts because the wise men knew the Old Testament scriptures. They knew what they said, and they knew what Isaiah wrote, um, and Jeremiah, and other prophets wrote about the coming king of the Jews, the coming savior of the world. They knew what they wrote because they had read it many times, and they had studied it, and they had learned from it. So they knew that when this star appeared in the sky, they knew this was the savior of the world. This wasn't just another baby. And they knew what his life was going to somewhat be like because it was foretold in the Old Testament scriptures. So they brought gifts that had specific, deep meanings to that. Okay, and we've looked at some of these. We looked at the first two. Okay, obviously we looked at gold the first week. The gift that represented the king. Okay, he was he was foretold to be the king of kings, the lord of lords, the ruler of the Jews. Okay, he was coming to be as a king. Okay, now the Jews took that the wrong way. Uh, they 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 took it as hey he's going to come, he's going to overthrow the Roman Empire, and he's going to be king of everything. And we're going to be his right hand men and women, and we're going to rule over the rest of the world with him. Okay? That's obviously not what Jesus came for. Okay? He did come as and he did come to be the king of the Jews, to be the king of the kings, okay? but he didn't come the way they were thinking in a mighty battle warrior. Okay? He came as a baby and talked about love his whole life. Okay? So, but he was a king, that's why they brought gold. And last week we looked at frankincense. Okay, we talked about the high priest and how the high priest would use frankincense um, in many different places all throughout the temple, but specifically on the altar inside the Holy of Holies, where only the high priest could go. It was a special sacred place where God dwelt among his people. Okay, but that was before Jesus. When Jesus came, all that went away. Okay, he was the high priest representing the ultimate, and we're going to talk about tonight. Um, to get into more, we're going to talk about sacrifice because that's what Jesus really, really came for. And that's why myrrh was a gift that was given to him. We're going to talk about that in a minute. So, myrrh, what is myrrh? Okay, myrrh is a spice. Okay, myrrh is a, is a nice scented, 
okay, elements that, that was typically used, most of the time it was being used, it was being used as an ingredient used for embalming people. Okay, what is embalming? Uh, dead people. Okay, when somebody has passed, okay, when somebody has passed, they embalm the body to give it a little bit of color for the funeral, okay, um, to help it be preserved, so to say, in those last few days. Okay, but then it's used to anoint dead bodies because when people pass and they sit in they sit in the grave, um, in this case they, they weren't put in, in a casket and buried in the ground, they were placed in a tomb which was just cut out of the rock, side of a hill usually. Um, okay, so bodies just kind of deteriorate, and as they deteriorate, they smell. Okay, so myrrh was used to Keep the bodies from smelling too terribly bad. Okay, but obviously after a while it just deteriorates to a point that it's just beyond anything they can do. But it was used for the burial process. Okay. Makes sense, right? You guys start to see the big picture here because Jesus' ultimate goal, the reason why he came, was not to be a baby in a manger. It was not to be the king of Jews. It was not to be um, you know, a uh, great prophet and priest. The reason he came was to pave a way for you and me to have a relationship with God, to have forgiveness of sins. Ultimately, that was through sacrifice. Okay, So that's why myrrh was brought, because the wise men, again, they knew the Old Testament scriptures. They knew the prophecies about him that he was going to um, be martyred, basically. He was going to be killed. They knew that because it was prophesied hundreds of years before in the Old Testament. All right, so we're going to look at that real, real quick tonight. This is, the, this is the passage that the, uh, that the wise men would have studied and would have known. Isaiah chapter 53. Uh, the whole chapter talks about Jesus. Okay, But we're going to look at one specific verse, why they brought myrrh, specifically myrrh for him. Okay, All of us, it says, all of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet, yet the Lord laid on him the sins of the world. Okay, the Lord laid on him. Him being who? God. Okay. God Jesus. didn't lay. Okay. Jesus, thank you. I know you got a mouthful of water there. It's okay. Okay. The Lord laid on him. The Lord laid on Jesus the sins of us all. And this goes on to talk about how he's you know, pierced for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. Okay. Um, it talks about what's going to happen to the Savior of the world. What's going to happen to Jesus in Isaiah 53. Again, several hundred years prior to the birth of Jesus himself. But the wise men knew that, hey, he's going to die. He is going to die. So there's going to be a process where he's going to be part. So they brought Merck to represent the gift of his ultimate sacrifice on our behalf. Okay? Um, and a little bit later on, Paul, not a little bit later on, a lot later on, several hundred years after Isaiah, we have Paul, okay, the, the greatest missionary to ever live, Philippians to the he wrote in sorry he wrote to the church in Philippi okay and this is what he had to say in chapter two of that letter um, though he was God this is Jesus again though he was God he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to so he could have come and said hey I'm God okay God is my Father I am part of God God is part of me I am the King and you all are just going to bow to me be my loyal subjects he could have done that he could have said hey I'm God and you're not so you just do exactly what I say, when I say, how I say to do it. When I say jump, you say how high. He could have been that way, but he wasn't. He was full of love and compassion. And he wasn't going to lord it over them, the fact that he was God. Okay? He gave up his divine privileges. He left heaven. He was in heaven. He wasn't a baby in heaven. He was Jesus. He was full-grown Jesus, God, in heaven. And he says, if this is what it's going to take for these people, have a relationship with God, be able to have forgiveness, to have eternal life. If this is what it takes, I will leave. I will go. I will be born as an infant and go through life, even though I don't have to. I'm going to because that's what needs to be done. Okay? He gave up his divine privileges, humbled himself to the position of a slave, was born a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself even more in obedience to God, and he died a criminal's death on a cross. Not just, you know, he didn't just die a death. He died a criminal's death. A horrible, tragic, unjust, 
criminal's death, even though he was completely innocent. Okay? He, but he knew that was how you and I were going to have forgiveness of sins, and how you and I were going to be able to have a relationship with God and have eternal life. So he was willing to do all that. Okay? Let that sink in this Christmas season. Okay? Yes, we celebrate the birth of Jesus, but we celebrate Jesus, the Savior of the world, who died for all of our sins, who died for on our behalf. That's what he came for, and that's why myrrh is so, so important. So what does this really mean for us? Okay, What does this mean for you and for me today? How do we apply that to our lives? Okay, Number one, we have to realize, because God is perfect, because God is just God, he is a just God means he does no wrong. He sees everything perfectly legit. He does not punish someone who doesn't deserve to be punished. He doesn't let someone get away with something um, who deserves to be punished. Okay, He is just. He is perfect. Sin must be accounted for. And all sin. All sin. Okay? We look at, oh, you know what, maybe I just told a little white lie. No big deal. But you know what? To God, a little white lie, that's a sin, is on the same playing field as every other sin there is. It's on the same playing field as murder. Because it's a sin. Because it's part of his holiness. It's, it's not in line with what he has for us. So it doesn't matter whether it's a little tiny white lie or it's committing any other of the nine other commandments that we have or any other sin that we have. Okay? It's all in a level playing field with God. Sin is sin is sin. Okay? Now, does that mean that, you know, hey, it's no big deal to go out and murder someone? Absolutely not. Okay, you don't okay. take it that way. So in, in God's eyes, if we break, it says in the scriptures, if we break one law, we're guilty of breaking all of it. Okay? We're guilty of breaking it all. So we have to be atoned for. It has to be accounted for. There has to be some form of sacrifice, some form of penance paid to the Lord. And he's perfect. He's just. So sin must be accounted for. It must be paid for in some way, shape, or form. Okay? Jesus carried our sorrows. He was crushed for our iniquities. And the Lord laid every sin that belonged to us onto Jesus. Okay, think about that. I This is nowhere in scriptures, but... <coughs> I personally believe, as I, as I read through the New Testament and I read the crucifixion story, okay, um, I believe that time where God turned His back on Jesus, okay, because Scripture tells us that, that God looked away from Jesus for the very first time ever. He looked away, and it went dark. It went dark for hours, completely pitch black, dark in the middle of the day. It went dark. I believe, I truly believe that's when God took all sin of all mankind for all time and put it on Jesus. It took him that long. The God of the universe, who step of a finger, created the entire universe and all the universes out there. It took him that long to put all the sins of all the people on the shoulders of Jesus before he died. It took him hours for it all to be there. And Jesus bared that burden. Right? He carried our sorrows. He took our iniquities. And he put every sin he had on him. And he gave it up. He died for you and for me. Okay? That's why myrrh is important as a gift. So, at Christmas, we celebrate the birth of our Savior. And we celebrate Jesus. But this ultimately is a celebration of the one who bore our sin, our transgression, to make a way for us to be right with God. We celebrate the sacrifice, the only sacrifice that could truly atone for our sin and make us right with God. And lead to a relationship with God and eternal life in heaven. It's the only way it could have been done. So we celebrate the birth of Jesus, the baby, looking down the line. We celebrate this baby knowing that this baby is the one who eventually became a savior of the world. Right? So, gold, the gift of a king. Frankincense, the gift of a high priest. And myrrh, the gift representing the ultimate sacrifice. That's why these three gifts are important and why we can't just look past, hey, they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh, um, you know, <laughs> um, as a Christian comedian once said, why did they bring him gold? They should have brought him a blanket, okay, because he was born in a stable. It was dark. It was cold, all right? It was a joke, okay? But we look at that and we go, okay, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense why they would bring him these, these three weird gifts, does it? When we look at it the right way through the eyes of Scripture, we look at it through the meaning of what those gifts were, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. 
And guys, how we wrap this all up, okay, the last thing on your notes, how I view Jesus matters. Okay, because unfortunately, too many people in the church today view Jesus as a Santa Claus. That I just get to go to and I get to ask him for the things that I want and I hope he delivers. They don't look at Jesus as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. They don't look at Jesus as the high priest who we get to go to for anything and everything. Who can teach us and help us and encourage us along the way in our relationship with Jesus. And we don't look at Jesus as the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. Because if we looked at Jesus with these three things, if we looked at Jesus as a king, as the high priest, and as our ultimate sacrifice, if we looked at him that way all the time, our lives would be drastically different. They really, really would be. Because too many people want to look at God and Jesus it's just this person who sits, there's, a, there's a two views. Either he is a God who just is waiting there with a lightning bolt in his hand, waiting for you to mess up so bad he's going to strike you down with that lightning bolt. Or they look at him as just a, a fairy godfather who's just there to, to, to just wait on them hand and foot. And they give them their every last little desire. That's not who God is. Neither one of those is who God is. God is a God who loves you so much. He was willing to sacrifice his own son on your behalf. Okay? That's a God who loves you. That means you are invaluable. No matter what this world says about you, you are invaluable. God created you, he loved you, and he died for you. Your value is immeasurable. But you're also a human being who has sinned. And we need to realize who we are. We're sinners. We need to realize who he is. The king of the world, king of kings, lord of lords, the ruler of my life. When I give my life to him, it is no longer mine, it is his. You have to submit to him. I have to submit to his authority. I have to submit to his will. Okay? Which means i got to know what that is. The only way I can know what that is is if I'm reading my Bible and I'm talking to him. And I'm coming to church as often as possible to try and learn about it even more. Right. So guys, let's, let's pray. Dear God, thank you again so much for this day. Thank you for this time. Thank you that uh, your word gives us truth. It gives us meaning. It gives us purpose in life. Uh, Father God, I just pray that this Christmas season we would not um, just be focused on you know presents and, and who knows what, lights and trees and all those things that, that the world has created to take your place. I pray, Father God, that we would focus on Jesus. We focus on the birth of our Lord folks, in the birth of our Savior. God, if there's anyone in here who does not know you as their Lord and as their Savior, I pray that you would make it uh, just crystal clear to them that, hey, they need to give their life to you. That they need to invite you into their life. And they, need, they need to um, they need just make you their Lord. They need to make you their Savior. Um, if they have questions about that, God, I pray that they would just be willing to ask. Uh, talk to one of us adults. Uh, Father God, I pray that you would give us Strength to finish this week strong, to get through our tests, our finals, uh, do our very best. We've got to pray that you bring us back here on Sunday for Sunday school, for worship, for our Christmas party. Um, God, may you be given all glory and all honor in our lives. Go with us now. Go before us. Go with us. Prepare the way. Um, and God, use us. Use us to share your light with somebody out there in the darkness. In Jesus' name, amen.